Let's tie all of these together uh, with something practical. Uh, all of you know what a battery is. A battery in your cell phone uh, is, uh, runs, the, runs the loads that your uh, phone uh, requires, whether it is uh, communication, the phone activity, uh, whatever it might be. So we can think of your, your phone or any other system that has a battery as, as a, this is my symbol for a battery. And let's say we have a um, nine volt battery. And, and we, we look at the battery as, as being a chemical device with terminals and we say they're positive and negative terminals. And whatever your system is built of can be abstracted as a load. The load we are representing the load as a resistance R. So when we when we subject our battery to this load, and we typically will have an on-off switch of some kind, maybe, and uh, uh, maybe I have an on-off switch of some kind. So when I turn the switch on. Okay, when the switch is closed, this will cause a current to flow across the load that will power the function of your system, whether it's a cell phone or any other device. Now we have the equation that we saw before, which is energy is equal to power times time. So I'm going to write that as E equals P times time. But we also know power P is given by V times I. So I can write this as V times I times time. So when we have a battery, the battery has a fixed amount of energy. So this is fixed. Now, and, and one of the properties of a battery is it provides a constant voltage. This is also fixed. So the way we, we uh, have this equation tells us that, uh, that if I want the, uh, the battery to la last for a long amount of time, the only thing I can control is the current. This is the control. So I have these two in my control, so I can, I can uh, consume less less current and make it last longer or I can consume more current and have it last less time. So this is a practical application of something that we've already looked at.